everybody. So uh, we're going to call the meeting to order uh, at 7 o'clock, and we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I have some flags over here. Uh, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, it stands. one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. For all. Okay, so uh, do we have any uh, comments from visitors regarding the agenda items? Okay, uh, hearing none, then we will uh, go on to the chairperson's report. Uh, Bob? Yes, I'll give that. Thank you, Bob. First, I'd like to thank Bob Raven Seegers for uh, hosting the meeting tonight in my absence. Thank you, Robert. Uh, first of all, I'm the policy committee chair and the facilities committee chair. I'm going to table the appointments until the conclusion of the town election, which is on Tuesday, November 2nd. Uh, we have a number of people that I know are interested. There could be a big change over on the board. Uh, right now, we still have a co-chair, which is John Welsh, for the policy committee. And what I'll do is I'll schedule a facilities committee meeting and get John Corcoran a date that works for him. And I'll try to get Ricky Bortz, who's shown some interest uh, in it, to be uh, able to uh, meet with us as well so we can take a look at the facility. So if you could schedule that with, uh, with Ray, we'd appreciate that. Uh, so pretty much that's it. That's the end oh. of my report for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Missy, you're up. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm missing. Good evening. I want to uh, start by giving a shout out to Junior at East Granby High School, Nathaniel Swanson. He is the young man as part of his um, Eagle Scout project. He created, he designed, created, and built the Gaga Pit um, at Seymour School. So Nathaniel worked with the town and our facilities department and the principal of the school for the placement. Uh, he did the design. I know he had some donations um, that we're very appreciative of, and the kids are having a blast. So I have to be honest with you, I wasn't sure what a Gaga Pit was. Um, I thought, you know, I hear Gaga and I, something, I think rock band. So um, I did have to Google it, but Google did give me the definition of Gaga pit. And it's actually at my, a couple of the elementary schools in the town I live in. I just never knew what it was. So um, the kids are having a, a lot of fun, some good exercise. So we certainly want to thank uh, Nathaniel for that project. Many, many years coming. Missy? <laughs> yes. Oh, my question was your question. I didn't hear the answer to the question. Oh. <laughs> What's a gaga pit? <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> so a gaga pit is, it's like a simulated dodgeball, but it's done in a, conf it's a confined area where you, um, with your hand, you want to kind of hit the ball back and forth without it touching you. So if it touches any part of your body, then you're out. It's like hexagonal, small with yes. sand on the bottom. Very good. Thank you. I just add, Missy, what a phenomenal person Nathaniel is. The yeah. PTO got the pleasure to work with him. He came to the meeting to ask for funding for the Gaga Pit, which we did. And he's just a really awesome, awesome kid. So he Scramby should be proud. And the kids are so excited. Yeah, he is. Thank Great. you. That's awesome. OK. Um, Next up is a report from the uh, PDEC committee, committee meeting, which we had, I think, two weeks ago now. And reporting on that will be our Director of Curriculum and Professional Development, Mrs. Marjorie Light. Hello, everyone. Marjorie. Marjorie. Hi. Hi. So um, for those of you who are newer to the Board of Education, um, the PDEC committee meets at least twice a year. And that stands for Professional Development and Evaluation Committee. It's um, a mandated by the State Board of Ed. It started in 2013. And so um, the committee is made up of um, myself as the head of the committee. And then there are other administrators, but mostly it's made up of um, our faculty. So they have to be certified. And then we also have representatives from our bargaining unit for the teachers who come to the meeting as well. One of the charges by the state is that we um, 
create proposals for the Board of Ed about um, teacher observations. Like last year, um, the state is offering um, an alternate um, way of doing observations so that it is a little bit less than what we would normally do in a regular year. Um, for, uh, so pre-pandemic, um, we had the observations that were um, being done that the Board of Ed had approved. And then last year, part of our flexibilities were that um, teachers had fewer observations. So if you were a tenure teacher, instead of having two, one formal, you had two informals. Um, and, and formal observations take quite a bit um, more time for both the teacher and the administrator. And then um, this year, for 2021-22, the state is using the same number of um, observations. So for tenure to be two informals, one review of practice, and then for non-tenured, one formal, three informals, and one review of practice. Um, we would still have administrators going into the classroom frequently. Um, they just wouldn't be entered into the ProTrack system. If we had a hello, hi Michelle. Oh, hi. hi Michelle. If we had a um, a teacher who needed um, extra support, there are ways that we can um, put that support in there while still doing this flexibility. Um, another change from last year to this year is that teachers have more options for the student learning objectives. So last year, um, East Granby Public Schools had one major student learning objective, SLO, and that was um, social emotional learning for students. And this year, in addition to SEL, social emotional learning, they are adding student engagement, engagement with families, cultural responsiveness, or academic achievement. So there are five choices for the teachers um, from which they can choose. And teachers can have more than one SLO. And then lastly, the change is that we will be going back to scoring observations. So last year during the height of the pandemic, observations were conducted and we had um, meetings at the end of the school year with the teachers and reviewed what had happened, but there wasn't a score. This year we would go back to the scoring, um, the method that we've used in the past before the pandemic. So what I'm here for tonight is to ask the, um, on behalf of the PDEC committee, to ask the Board of Ed to accept our request to follow state guidelines for 21-22 in regards to the flexibility option for teacher observations. So that sounds like a motion we'll want a board member to make later. Yeah, there'll be a motion later, but if there's any questions now, we can certainly answer those from board members. I don't see that under the uh, recommended actions, but we're gonna, we'll, uh, do we need to um, um, make an addition to the agenda or what can we somehow fold it into the- Actually. Bob, look at item four. There's two sections of recommended action. So under um, item four. 4A. Four 4A. Four okay. Okay. Sorry, it was a little tricky. Okay, so there's two recommended action sections. Correct. Any questions? No, it seems uh, it seems reasonable. So we're, we're we're we still have the flexibility, but we're also going back to the greater rigor of uh, kind of the pre-pandemic way of doing things. So it's a combination of both. Correct. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you. And Thank then you. Marjorie will Thank also. You Marjorie. And then Marjorie will also speak to the school calendar recommendations for 22-23 school year. Okay. Lisa Klein had previously emailed you um, a calendar, um, a draft of the 22-2023 school year calendar. 
basically on um, the calendar as far as uh, PDEC is concerned our job is to make recommendations to the Board of Ed about our PD dates and um, how they're spread apart and how often we have them and then when full days versus half days occur and similar to this year um, we have the same number of days for our professional development. We have full days um, spread throughout the year, most of them being in the front of the year so that we can front load information and professional development um, as the school year is getting underway. And then we space <clears throat> our half days on varying days in order to um, lessen the impact of our K through five specials schedule. So if, for instance, if you had them all on the same day, then um, that would mean that students would miss uh, coding or the students would miss art um, consecutively and that would um, cause an inequity in their learning versus their other students. Um, one of the or requests that was unanimous. So the um, PDEC committee, which is made up of all the curriculum leaders and um, members of the union, um, unanimously requested that the school year start for um, new teachers on August 25th, that uh, the teachers as a whole would return on the 29th with our students returning on the 31st. Um, they said that historically, um, so Tim Phelan was at the meeting. Um, he was a former teacher and now the principal at the middle school. He said that historically, East Granby would start the year with students the Wednesday before Labor Day, but it um, had crept backwards and they believe some of that was due um, to uh, the superintendent's response to a massive storm that had occurred um, years ago and um, so this way it would allow our schedule to coincide so I contacted other districts to find out when they would be uh, doing their schedule and uh, Simsbury has their students starting on the 31st West Hartford has their students starting on the 31st region 10 has their students starting on the 31st I contacted Suffield. Um, they have not uh, voted on their calendar yet, but um, Suffield and Avon both took down the dates um, that I shared with them. Also, we would all have um, the same spring break dates, which is useful for our teachers who live in other districts to have um, a similar time off with their children, um, which will be great. Um, another reason that people gave was um, the impact to moving their children into college and um, issues they had with child care at the start of the year. And then um, for the end of the year, it, it lessens the time for families between when our school ends and then when summer camps start. So it gives um, them not a difficult time to be able to find childcare to bridge that gap in between. Mm -hmm. And that is all. Any questions on the calendar? Well, it sounds like you're trying to um, coordinate with, with other districts to have a kind of a uniform uh, calendar, both for like uh, to line up all of the vacations uh, for the parents so that, uh, you know, um, and also um, trying to, um, like that you say that uniformity and I, I would suppose that the the people would be going uh back to the college like on the 27th 28th that weekend there i also uh, talked to other districts about aligning the pd date because when we did the joint pd with suffield before the yes. pandemic that was very popular and um really was <laughs> able to um, make some connections between our teachers and the suffield teachers and it's something that um, our curriculum leaders and faculty would like to do again. And so I did talk to other districts too about 
our PD date so that we would have at least one coinciding PD date. Because okay. that's something I'd like to continue. And, and we can, when it comes down to the motion to accept, um, we are early in the you know in the school year. So if the board would like to table that for another time in, with the motion, um, there's quite a, a few, quite a number of community, community members on this evening. So perhaps we'll give them an opportunity to give us some feedback on you know that start date um, if they so desire. So you know again to kind of sum sum it up, we have started. The request is to start the Wednesday before Labor Day this coming year. In the past number of years, we've started two Wednesdays prior to Labor Day. Um, so we're looking to bring it back to the Wednesday before Labor Day for a start date. Thank you, Marjorie and, and Missy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, what COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccination and testing policy. Yes. Um, so, board members, you did receive a copy of the uh, draft policy. This was uh, put together and submitted by um, our attorney McLean, the school board, board attorney. Essentially, uh, for our community members who might not be aware of Executive Order 13G, I know all of our board members are aware, it's a um, executive order for the protection of public health and safety during COVID-19 pandemic vaccination requirements for state employees, school staff, and child care workers. So essentially this executive order goes into effect um, actually today, and the order requires school boards to implement policy containing certain requirements that are set forth in the executive order. So this policy essentially mirrors the executive order. Um, you know, it does Again, just for some of our, our community members who might not be aware, it requires all covered workers under a school board to either have the COVID-19 vaccination or to receive an exemption or to um, partake in weekly testing with the timely submission of their results to our school personnel. So this kind of outlines that um, executive order. So there is a motion uh, later on to accept this policy and it would be for the duration of the school year. So through June 30th, 2022, or if executive order 13 G is no longer in effect, whichever comes first. Thank you, Miss. And do board members, do you have any questions about either the executive order or the policy? Just to uh, have one, uh, Missy, about, um, so you, it affects, as you read it, um, the employees of the school district. And so how are like the vendors of our school district, folks that are coming in, maybe servicing students or providing services and transportation company, that type of thing, how are they being um, addressed in the executive sure. order? Sure, that's, that's a good question. So anyone that we, um, contract with separately through our you know student services we put them under our staffing so we did the uh, verification of their uh, vaccination status or their test results okay. 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 our bus company is considered a contractor mm -hmm. so there is a form that contractors have to submit to attest to the verification of their employees mm -hmm. so that just came out last friday <laughs> Um, you know, so we have been, uh, obviously we, we've only had two weeks heads up on this. So we've been, yeah. you know, running quickly. Um, sometimes it feels like in place, but we've been running quickly. So prior to the documentation from the state for contractors to sign, we have already worked with M and J on the vaccination status. Mm -hmm. We also have a number of field work placements and student teachers. So any student teacher that we already had within our district we verify the vaccination status. Any of our field work placements through University of Hartford, they're the contractors. They are taking care of the vaccination in a test and can attest to the status of all of their students coming through. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, it looks like if we don't have any uh, further um, questions about the COVID uh, vaccination and testing policy, we can move on I to. I have one more question. Um, okay. I just, with what percentage of 
Uh, um, can you share what percentage of teachers are electing to get tested versus not vaccinated or not disclosing? I could disclose it. I just don't have the exact percentage, Rick. I can tell you our staff, we are 100% in compliance with okay. either uh, vaccination or testing. So we don't have a single staff member, you know, not at work today. The vast majority Perfect. are vaccinated. Okay. And those who are choosing to get weekly, those who are choosing to get weekly tested, I assume that the district's health insurance will cover every test and as well as, are they doing it during normal working hours or compensated if they have to do it outside of working hours? Um, they are not doing it during work hours and it depends on the insurance and where they go for testing. Okay. So there are some state sites that are completely free for anybody and those state sites have been shared for testing. Um, most people that I've spoken to, they have standing appointments um, at any particular place, um, you know, that's close to their home or close to East Granby if they're leaving work. Um, you know, we are working with our staff, of course. So should there be a time that they could not get their after school appointment and they need to work within the school day, um, you know, we will be working with them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so if there are no more questions or comments uh, with regard to that, then we can move on to the first uh, recommended action section, which is to uh, accept the teacher evaluation flexibility option as outlined by uh, Marjorie Light. Does anyone so, want to have a motion? I'll make the motion to accept the uh, option presented. I'll second. Okay, great. Uh, any discussion? Okay, uh, hearing none, then uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> motion carries. <clears throat> okay, moving along to accepting the 2022-2023 school calendar. Uh, do we have a motion to accept or a motion to table? I, I'll make the motion, but I think we should maybe call it um, more of a, an exception uh, ex to accept the professional development calendar of 22-23 because we don't actually accept the full school calendar until April. Or like, oh, oh, no, yeah, April is April, early, yeah. sorry, sorry, I stand corrected. We don't accept the, the current school year's like last day of school until April. Is that that's correct, Miss, Missy? So do we, Usually guess, that's when we set our I'm graduate. not sure what you're asking, Michelle, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, it's just when I was thinking about the 22-23 calendar, um, I don't recall approving it so early in the year of the, you know, the school year before it, because what we were discussing is really more the PD days of the calendar and the, and the start date of the school year. Um, so as long as it's in traditional, if, if, it, if we're all in the same, you know, similar time frame as past years. We are we are a little earlier with the calendar okay. this year because we wanted to put it out there. I'm not sure if you're thinking of graduation date. That's so right. Has... That's so. Then all of a sudden, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh wait, we usually have to like wait till April, but that's for this current year graduation, the end of. Okay. Well, and this is going to be a provisional because uh, we don't know if we're going to have any snow days or uh, things like that. So, so we're we're accepting that the calendar the graduation that... day. We're just accepting the calendar that family and staff are going to receive, and then obviously things change if there's weather yeah. or all that. Is, can I ask Missy a question? Of course. June 14th is Juneteenth national holiday. No, that would be June 19th. 19th. 14th is Flag Day. <laughs> oh, June? Right. Is that when he? Okay. I June 14th said... is Flag Day. Okay. All right. I mean, not, but not a day, a national day off. Yeah, kind of thing. Right. Um, okay. I just, I just. So, thought we'd... All right. So let's um, maybe change the wording, uh, thinking of what Amanda just said, um, that 
Uh, the motion is made to accept the provisional calendar as presented this evening um, for planning purposes and, and as we state on the back of the calendar, the board can vote to change the calendar at, at any time. Or I forget exactly what the wording is, but so my motion is that. I'll second it. I'll second. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Any further okay. discussion? And regarding the, again, the provisional nature of this, uh, but uh, with reference to the, uh, I'm sure that Marjorie wants to line up those uh, professional yeah, development planning. days ASAP. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, uh, like to put it to a vote. We have a, um, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, I, hold on, Bob. I got to have this, some discussion before we go. Okay, uh, Bob. I would have liked to support a motion that was going to table this calendar because it seemed to be it's very wishy-washy what we're actually approving tonight. If we want to approve the professional development days as recommended, I go for that. But the rest of it, I, I like the idea Missy brought up earlier. If it's tabled, we have 23 participants tonight. Parents find out about it. We may get some feedback between now and next meeting and then vote on it again. Uh, again, it just gives the opportunity for the board to look at it. I, I appreciate that Missy's prevented, given it to us at an earlier date. Uh, gives us the opportunity to have a calendar earlier, and we can actually schedule graduation legally now a lot earlier. So I'm going to vote no on the motion because I would have liked it tabled. Uh, I just didn't seem to think there was clarity to it. That was it. Thank you. Well, to that yeah, you know, that point, that was kind of my purpose of sort of modifying the motion slightly is that it's more approving in the past, you know, to so that we can plan for professional development days. I do like setting the start date, you know, just because, and I, I do appreciate that it's closer to Labor Day and not backing it up a full week before. Um, I didn't say that earlier, but that I totally support that. I think, um, Bob, maybe your fears might be allayed by the fact that we do have the statement on the calendar that families will see when it's presented that at any point in time, forget, forgive me that I don't know the exact wording, I can look it up, but that um, the, it's subject to board um, changes um, as the year goes. And I think that statement was revised about a bunch of times after the October snowstorm because of the situation we were in. Right. So, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I think um, for planning purposes, we can um, move forward with this version of the calendar, knowing that there will be others. So as long as by we its very nature, that, it is by its very nature it is provisional, but it will at least let, let, allow Marjorie to uh, line up some uh, PD dates and, and perhaps uh, uh, sync us with uh, to some of the other discs it, around. It, it is consistent with what other districts do in as far as, like, as Marjorie said, she called Simsbury, she called Granby and other towns. Southfield. That they, that, yep. Southfield, that they have, you know, their next year's calendars issued. And it's always, you know, a point of contention that East Granby, why doesn't we, why don't we do what the surrounding towns do? So, right. I, 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 you know, Bob, obviously you're, you're entitled to your vote. And I think, um, you know, that, Maybe a bunch of these concerns can be, you know, by the word provisional, if Lisa's listening, um, change my motion to, you know, consistent with what I said, you make the calendar um, based on uh, for planning purposes and changes, you know, may occur as appropriate. Okay. Good points, Michelle. And, and I agree with all your points. I think the uh, calendar is much better starting later in August. I think that works. I think yeah. families will like that. Yeah. Uh, I like the way the vacation schedule is set up in April. I, I think there's been a lot of thought put into it. But again, I think if you look historically on the school calendar, I'm not sure when it was ever presented and accepted on the same evening. That, that's why I'm going with Missy's comment about maybe tabling it. I, I have no objections to it, but I would like to have community as well as board members. We have new board members have an opportunity to look okay. at it. I yeah. know last year we actually had there was questions from board members sitting here of changing a name of a holiday, and I don't think we've discussed it or thought about it, so that's my reasoning. And I'm not going to say no. I'll probably just abstain from voting on it. I'm yeah. not, I'm probably gonna... no, no, good, really good point, Bob. Maybe, you know, as we do in uh, other cases, present it for a recommended action, table it, 
get feedback, and then take it up again. Okay, so do we want to uh, withdraw that motion in a second? I think you got to vote on it. I think we've got the motion in a second. Yeah, it's already been yeah. yeah. Can I just add one more thing? So, and I understand, Michelle, what you're I Now that <laughs> Bob gave all those, I didn't think of all that. But I'm wondering if we're going to approve it. Of course, we can change at any time. But I agree that if for some reason the first day needed to be changed or something needs to be changed, if parents, I know a lot of parents are going to see that and be like, ooh, put that in their cat. You hate to throw people off. So I don't know. Maybe do we do we digest yeah. a little bit? I don't know. Yeah, we could. And and to that point, I Googled while we were talking about it earlier what the Jewish holidays are. I know our district doesn't um, uh, recognize them. Oh, not that we don't recognize them, but we don't have them in our calendar. I was looking to see if the September PD day coincided with the uh, Yom Kippur, but it doesn't. So Yom Kippur is until October, um, the beginning of October, which is not a day that we have off, which, you know, now they have Rosh Hashanah. A lot of districts have Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, but, you know, so that may be feedback we get from our communities. Say, hey, put a PD day on that day, you know, and then calendars and kids and schedules can be um, accommodated. That's why so, I like to table it so we approve one calendar and 95% of the community sees one calendar. We don't get confused by having three or four. That's my well, other point. I think what we can do then, uh, if we have a motion in a second and we can't withdraw it, then we could all vote to abstain, uh, and that would, in effect, table it uh, to okay. a future date. Uh, okay. I, I think we'd have to vote no, Bob. I think if everyone abstained except one person, the motion's going to carry. If we abstain and one person votes in favor, the motion carries. An abstention, we still have a quorum. You don't you don't need to have a quorum vote right. as long as everyone votes on it. I think I think we need to either vote no or accept it. And uh, I, I think if, so, if everyone yeah. abstained, then you're right, but we may not all abstain. Are you sure we can't just I can't just withdraw my motion? I guess you could withdraw. You can withdraw your motion. You have that prerogative. If I'm not I can withdraw you my motion, I'll save everybody for going on the record of voting no, since we don't. <laughs> so. Okay, so uh if so, um, Michelle has withdrawn her order. motion. Um, Amanda, are you going to withdraw your second? Yes, I'll withdraw the second. <laughs> okay, so we're uh, we're back to square one. So, uh, does anyone want to uh, vote to uh, table the motion until further? So moved. I'd like to make that motion. Oh, okay, okay John's going to. <laughs> okay, and who's seconding? I'll second it, John. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, all in favor of tabling uh, the the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Super duper. Okay, rocking along here. Uh, accept the uh, COVID-19 vaccine or in testing policy. Does anyone have a motion to accept? So moved. Okay, and do we have a second? I'll, I'll second, second that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Bob is seconding, uh, Michelle is firsting, and Bob is seconding. Uh, do uh, we want to have any discussion? Okay, um, hearing no discussion, all in favor of the, um, to accept the policy as proposed, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'll abstain. Okay, uh, so we have one abstention and motion carries. Okay, uh, so the next item is uh, uh, the executive session, uh, personnel matter, uh, employee status. So this uh, will require us to, to go into executive session, uh, and that would mean that uh, um, the folks who are not a member of the board or any invitees uh, will have to um, uh, exit the exit the meeting. I'll now, put them in the waiting room, Bob. I could put them in the waiting room if they wish to wait, and I'll let them out whenever executive session ends if they wish to wait. They just we don't know how long that'll take, but I could, okay. I could get them back in if they want to stay. Uh, we could put them in the waiting room. And who are, who are we invited in, in terms of staff? Uh, the board and the superintendent. 
Okay, so we're going to uh, invite Missy to stay, and uh, but that's all. Okay, so um, do we? We I think we need a uh, a motion to go into executive session, but not to exit. Moved. It's Lynn. So moved. Okay, so John was first, and oh, okay, Lynn was first, and John was second. Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carries. Okay, we're going to be going into executive session. And sure. we yeah. already have that as a presentation, but um, the enrollment as of October 1. Absolutely. Sounds good. Anything else, folks? All righty. Um, so uh, then at this time, we would like to uh, entertain uh, comments from uh, visitors. Number nine. Okay. Um, going once, going twice. Okay. Did they uh, raise their hand? Are they raising their hand in the room? Yeah, I checked. Right? There isn't anybody no. raising their hand. Nope. Okay. Then uh, the next thing would be I would entertain a uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. John. John. Cochran. Uh, Who's second? second? <laughs> second. John seconding his own motion. Okay. Yeah, that's, second it. okay please note that in the minutes. Yeah, there, Michelle. Somebody all sleeping? Uh, okay. And uh, okay, so any discussion? Uh, <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? You know. Abstentions? A motion okay. carries. Okay. Have a good night, everybody.